Scene script. Have you ever tried to propagate a plant and ended up with poor results? It's a common problem that many plant enthusiasts face, particularly when it comes to difficult to root trees or woody or semi-woody branches. You might have attempted to take cuttings from these plants, hoping to see new roots sprouting, only to be met with disappointment. It's a frustrating experience, isn't it? Well, the good news is, you're not alone. Plant propagation can be a tricky business, but it's not an impossible one. With the right knowledge and techniques, you can turn those unsuccessful attempts into thriving new plants. Now you might be wondering, how is that possible? The answer lies in some secret rooting tricks and garden hacks that we're going to explore. These methods go beyond the usual cutting and rooting approach, offering alternative ways to propagate your favorite plants. So stay with us as we delve into these fascinating techniques that can help you achieve 100% success in plant propagation. But what if I told you that there are five different ways to multiply plants with 100% success results? Yes, you heard it right. Stick around and you'll soon be a master in multiplying even the most difficult to root plants. The first secret trick is all about timing. Yes, you heard it right. In the world of plant propagation, timing is a crucial factor that determines your success. Now, you might be wondering, why is timing so important? Well, let me enlighten you. Each plant species has its own growth cycle and rhythm. Some plants root best in the spring, while others prefer the fall. Therefore, understanding the growth cycle of your specific plant can drastically increase your chances of successful propagation. Let's take a deeper look into this. For example, if you're dealing with a deciduous plant which loses its leaves annually, the best time to propagate is usually in the late winter or early spring, just before new growth begins. On the other hand, for evergreen plants which retain their leaves throughout the year, propagation can be successful at almost any time, but spring and summer are often the best seasons. But what if you're working with a tropical plant or a houseplant? Most of these are evergreen and can be propagated year-round, but they usually root best during their active growth phase, which is typically in the warmer months. Now, let's add climate into the mix. The climate you are in can also influence the best timing for propagation. In colder climates, it's often best to propagate indoors during the winter months to protect the plant from frost. In contrast, in warmer climates, propagation can often be done outdoors year-round. So my friends, the trick is to observe, understand and respect the plant's natural cycle. Research your plant species, understand its growth habits and choose the best time to propagate accordingly. This method might require a bit of patience, but trust me, it's worth it when you see those new roots forming and your plant multiplying. So remember, timing is everything. Your plants have their own rhythm and by aligning with it, you're setting yourself up for propagation success. Our second secret trick involves the use of the right tools. Now you might be wondering, why are tools so important in plant propagation? Well, let's break it down. When we cut a branch, we're essentially creating a wound on the plant. This wound becomes a gateway for bacteria and other pathogens to invade the plant and potentially cause infection. But if we use clean, sharp tools, we can minimize the size of the wound and the risk of infection. So what kind of tools are we talking about? Primarily, we're looking at pruners or secateurs and potentially a grafting knife for more precise cuts. It's essential that these tools are sharp. A dull tool can crush the branch rather than make a clean cut, causing unnecessary damage to the plant. Now, let's talk about cleanliness. It's a step that's often overlooked, but it's just as important as having sharp tools. Before each use, clean your tools with a mild disinfectant to kill off any lingering bacteria or fungi. This can be as simple as wiping them down with a cloth soaked in a solution of one part bleach to ten parts water. And don't forget to maintain your tools. A rusty tool is a breeding ground for pathogens. Regularly oiling your tools can prevent rust and keep them working smoothly. Just a few drops of a light machine oil after each use can do the trick. It's not just about the plant either. 
Using the right tools can also make the process easier and safer for you. A sharp, well-maintained tool requires less force to use, reducing the risk of injury. So, there you have it. The right tools, properly maintained and cleaned, can make all the difference when it comes to successful plant propagation. It might seem like a small detail, but it's one that can have a big impact. With the right tools, you can significantly increase your chances of successful plant propagation. The third secret trick is all about the cutting technique. Now, when we think about plant propagation, we often jump to the conclusion that it's all about taking a branch and sticking it in the soil. However, cutting a branch for propagation is not as simple as it sounds. The technique you use can greatly impact the success of your propagation efforts. The first thing to consider is the angle at which you cut the branch. A straight cut is not the most efficient way to promote root growth. Instead, an angled cut increases the surface area that comes into contact with the soil. More surface area means more room for roots to develop. Next, let's talk location. Not all parts of a branch are created equal when it comes to propagation. You want to avoid the very tip of the branch as it's often too tender to root effectively. The same goes for the very base of the branch, which can be too tough. Instead, opt for the middle of the branch, where it's just right. Lastly, size matters. A cutting that is too small may not have enough stored energy to develop roots and a new shoot. On the other hand, a cutting that is too large can lose water quickly and wilt before it has a chance to root. A good rule of thumb is to aim for a cutting about 4 to 6 inches long. In essence, the cutting technique is not just about snipping off a branch and hoping for the best. It's an art that involves understanding the plant, making precise cuts, and ensuring the cutting is in the best possible condition to root successfully. But remember, like any art, practice makes perfect. So don't be disheartened if your first few attempts don't yield results. Keep trying, keep learning, and you'll soon find your green thumb. So a proper cutting technique can make all the difference. The fourth secret trick is the use of a rooting medium. Now, you might be wondering, what exactly is a rooting medium? Well, it's simply the substance that your cuttings or seeds are placed in to encourage root development. The right rooting medium can make a huge difference in whether your propagation efforts are successful or not. So what makes a good rooting medium? There are a few key factors to consider. Firstly, it needs to be light and fluffy to allow room for the roots to grow and expand. Secondly, it should have good drainage. Too much water can cause the roots to rot, which is definitely not what we want. Finally, the medium should be sterile to avoid any diseases or pests that could harm the new plant. Now, there are several options you can choose from when it comes to rooting mediums. These include water, soil, perlite, vermiculite, sand, or a mix of these. Each has its own benefits and drawbacks, so it's important to choose the one that best suits your specific plant and its needs. In conclusion, never underestimate the power of a good rooting medium. A good rooting medium is critical for successful plant propagation. Finally, our fifth secret trick is the use of air layering. Often overlooked, Air layering is a powerful tool in the plant propagation arsenal. Unlike traditional cutting methods, air layering allows the branch to develop roots while still attached to the parent plant. It's an ingenious process, really. Here's how it works. You make a small cut on a tree branch, then wrap that cut with moist sphagnum moss and secure it with a plastic wrap. The branch, still connected to the tree, continues to receive nutrients and water, and in response to the cut, starts to form roots right there in the moss. Air layering is particularly effective for those woody or semi-woody branches of fruit trees or fiddle fig trees that resist traditional propagation methods. It's a method that's patient, gentle, and surprisingly effective. It can take a few weeks to a few months, but the wait is worth it. The best part, even if you're a newbie gardener, you can pull this off. No need for any rooting hormone powder, just a bit of moss, some plastic wrap, and a little bit of time. Air layering, a powerful tool for successful plant propagation. 
Before we wrap up, here's a bonus hack for you. When propagating plants, remember that timing is everything. For the best results, try to propagate during the plant's natural growth cycle, typically in the spring or early summer. This is when the plant has the most energy to devote to creating new roots. Now, let's quickly recap what we've learned. We've explored five secret rooting tricks that can help you multiply even those difficult to propagate plants with 100% success. We've talked about different methods of air layering versus growing from plant cuttings. These techniques can be particularly useful for those hard to root trees or woody or semi-woody branches of fruit trees or fiddle fig trees. With these secret rooting tricks, even a newbie gardener can easily succeed in plant propagation